Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope that everything is going according to plan this week. And if not, keep your head up. Uh, trust me, I know what it's like to have things on deck and it, and, and that be an imperative uh, that these things get done. And, and at the same time, it seems like it, it's not going to happen. Uh, trust me, you have to remain committed. You have to remain focused. You have to uh, be willing to go the distance. There are a bunch of different things that contribute to success. Uh, yeah, it's crazy here in Houston. You're here in rain. Uh, so I'm definitely going to have to speak up because I do want to get this out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm in Houston, so this is a place where... If you don't like the weather, just chill for a couple of minutes and wait. Uh, it's bound to change. Uh, we just had a situation where it went from being sunny to overcast, and then the temperature dropped 20 degrees in a couple of hours, and then it started raining. Yeah, you know, that's how, how, how it is in Houston. If you from Houston and you check him out, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're sitting up going, man, what happened? Going to the office this morning and uh, before before the sun's out and it's warmer then than it is now. And that's Houston weather. Uh, but anyway, back to what I was saying. Keep your head up. Stay focused. Stay in the game. I know what it's like. Don't give up. Don't quit. It's about going the distance. There's no other way to put it. You got to finish. So, strap up, get to it, keep going. Uh, it's coming. All right. Uh, you know, I've been talking to you the last few days about what's going on with the dams and specifically the Biden administration. But uh, it looks like, uh, you know, I think blacks, at least on a small level, are beginning to get it because uh, in this election that just just transpired. It seems like dams didn't get to turn out all the support they thought they were going to get. And they took some hits. Uh, good for them. Uh, and I'm hoping that this is signaling a turn of events. To me, it's not even about who got voted in, who got voted out. It's about seeing how my people are moving. If they're going to be at the polls, how they're moving at the polls, how they're thinking at the polls, what message are they sending? And there's a bunch of ways to send messages, and I've been trying to teach uh, that for years. If you're, 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 your vote, if you're one of those people that believe your vote is so valuable, then you should be very careful how you spend it. The idea that you have to spend it is why black people are poor in the first place, is they get it and they feel they have to spend it. No. You need to learn how to hold it. You need to learn how to invest it. You need to learn how to make it build, build value. Well, how do you? How, how is it that you get your vote to build, build value? You don't simply give it away, first of all. You make people earn it. You withhold it a few times so people know that they don't automatically get it. Guess what happens when that happens? People will start actually wanting to give you stuff for it because they need it. They need numbers. And things like that. So, uh, you know, the whole idea that you have to vote somebody died, no. Man, I'll tell you what, if I'm going to use the argument somebody died for me to vote, then that means I need to handle that with care because that it, it's so, so much gravity. I don't just give it to somebody because they say they deserve it or because they belong to a certain party because I understand in, in observing the patterns of behavior and the history uh, of both parties that I've never got a win from either one. So, just sitting up and saying just because historically my people believe in you don't mean that I'm gonna come out of here I'm changing tradition the whole part of being radical is about moving in a different way than what is traditional being radical is about taking an approach and a direction that people think extreme that's how you change things you don't change things by going with the flow you don't change things through compliance and and and, and, and moving in, in ways that you are expecting to go, especially when moving in those ways have never produced anything for you. So I am super interested in seeing what's going on, but now to a more important matter. What are we doing? 
outside of complaining, outside of critiquing everything that everybody else does, what are we doing as individuals and what are we doing as a collective? And people, you know, ask, I get people who kind of comment on certain things I, I post on different uh, uh, platforms, especially the Black Voice Facebook page and the Black Voice uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I get I get questions and people ask about some of the videos that I post on those platforms that are not quote unquote about specific black issues and more on the lines of what I do at the Vision Aids Institute. So they're inspirational, they're instructional, they're empowering. They're about personal development, personal uh, empowerment, things of that nature. Uh, you know, it's about psychological development. All those things that are about becoming more empo empowered as an individual. And they want to know why I post it. Well, first and foremost, any machine or, uh, or chain is only strong as its weakest, weakest link. The thing that propels you can only propel you at the power and the force of what the weakest link can withstand. So it doesn't matter how strong others are if there are weak links. So in other words, in order to create a very strong collective, there must be very strong individuals willing to work as a collective. And so, yes, I share those videos because it's a bunch of people that look like me that need help, that need to feel inspired that need instruction on how to do things that need to be encouraged you know we can talk about the collective things i'm all for that because i believe in the collective i believe in unity i believe that that's one of the ways that we're going to make a difference but i also believe that when we start create creating individuals who are unapologetically black but also empowered we create an environment now that models uh, advancement and success and not success necessarily in the way that the Western culture defines it. Yes, I think we, we need an economic floor, so we need to be able to have financial and economic resources because that's where the power lies in a capitalist society. So you cannot have power without there being economic resources. So that's the first thing that you, you do have to have, but I think that we need to be defining success also in the way that we holistically educate and empower our youth. We need to define success in the way that we reestablish the importance of the black nuclear family and how it contributes to the minds and the developments of our youth. We need to be looking at how we're functioning it's for a success in how we view black businesses and black financial institutions and uh, the creation of our own entities through which we serve uh, the collective me. Those also have to be measurements of success, not just what's in your bank account, but how you put it there. What are you doing uh, to ensure that you're passing it on? What are you ensuring, doing to ensure that the next generation has a head start beyond where you started and so much more. So those are the things that I think that also have to be uh, barometers if we're going to talk about success. So in essence, that's why those videos are there is because they provide something that I do for a living that people who don't look like me find way more valuable than the people who do. So I have to find ways to put it in front of my people until they see the value in it and they start to seek it out for themselves. So that's that. Now, the question goes back to, what are we doing? And that question is gonna keep coming back until we have a clear answer to that question. What are we doing? How are we doing it? What is the goal? You know, what is our aim? I mean, do we have an agenda? Do we have an objective? Are we sitting up with a clear idea of where we're going and how we're gonna get there? That's called strategy. That's called vision. That's called planning. And we need that. We need that in our homes. We need that in our communities. We need that on a national and international global level. And so my thing is, uh, how do we come about doing it? We need to sit out and find minds who have something to contribute. 
these minds need to sit down and put egos aside. We need to sit down and use our gifts and our skills and our knowledge to sit up and come up with strategic plans that we can implement and execute and carry out. That's how it's done. Talking about it solely is not enough. You got to have boots on the ground. You got to have people engaged. You got to have literally systems in place. The reason we're struggling in America isn't because of bigotry. You have to understand that. It isn't because white people hate black people. It, that, that's not why we're struggling in America. We're struggling because a long time ago, white people put a system in place that serves uh, the interest of the white collective. And even those who may not have an issue with black people benefit from it and become accustomed to it and become unwilling to take the necessary action to actually do what inside they know what is right because it benefits them. And the natural human response is self-preservation. So while I want to do what's right, I cannot do what may harm me or the future of my children. And so that leaves it up to who? Us. But the thing is, you cannot beat a system with your emotions. You cannot beat a system with wishing. You cannot beat a system with periodic spurts of genius. You have to devise a system that out-executes the system that opposes you. That's not going to happen with the way we're moving right now. We have got to come together and create a system that will lift us and perpetuate the things that serve our values, interests, and principles in a manner that ultimately frees us and thrusts us into a space in which we are no longer at the whim of those who despise us, those who seek our demise, those who benefit from our oppression and suffering, and all of a sudden, the entire narrative changes. But it cannot change going the way we're going. We're too uh, aloof, we're too indifferent, we're too uh, individualized in our thinking, we are too selfish, uh, we're too judgmental, uh, and, 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 and so many other things. There's so much that needs to be worked out and we don't have a plan. We don't have an agenda, we don't have a strategy, we don't have an objective, and it shows. It shows. We've got way too much wasted brilliance because we're not putting it to work. We're not putting it to use. We're flaunting it. We're having these intellectual masturbating uh, events. We're having all these things where everybody's out to show just how much they know and that they're better than the other person. Uh, man, I, 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 I don't, I, I want to, personally, I want to be in a room where everybody in the room is a beast and better than me. That's the room I want to be in. Life, in life, that's the room I want to be in. I want to be in a room where I'm challenged, where just being in the room, I'm in the presence of greatness that challenges me to be greater. That's what I want. So I'm not intimidated by other men. I'm not intimidated by the genius of other men. I bask in it. I love to be around it. I, I you know, I invite it. But far too many of my brothers aren't the same way. Far too many of my brothers avoid bringing anyone around they think may outshine them. I spend time in interviews and on panels with people. And it's like, man, I'm in heaven. And like, they're like, you know, you know, talking about who I am and what I do, and I'm just like, dude, I, you don't know. I've been, I've been reading your stuff since, and and, and, it, and it, it, it doesn't diminish me because I know who I am. It doesn't diminish me because I don't need anybody to validate me. I'm not in competition with my brothers. I'm fighting hard to unite with my brothers, and that's what we need. We need these minds and these skills and these these unbelievable gifts to come together and to create the path of our liberation because we haven't been liberated. We're nowhere close to being liberated. We have, in order for us to be liberated, we must first liberate our minds and our minds are 100% in bondage. 
And so that's the thing that we're going to have to look at, how we talk to one another, how we look at one another, how we treat one another, how our men handle our women, how our women view and discuss our men openly and vice versa. Uh, the, so we can call that the element of self-hate. We need to deal with that. Uh, we need to deal with our issues with money, how we handle money, how we think about money, how we, uh, and, 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 and all of that, the psychology of money. We need to deal with that. We need to deal with the importance of knowing how to educate our youth. That is immensely important. There's so much that's on deck right now that we simply are not ready for it. So, in essence, I'm hoping that this video gets out to some people that it needs to get out to. And that we put whatever we need to put aside and we come together and we join forces and we create something so powerful that it can't be stopped. That is my goal and I really truly hope that it happens. And on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. And as I am required to do now by the organization, we need your support. We need you to uh, show some love and support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project. Uh, by now, you know you can find out how to support us by going to the description box or the post box, depending on what platform you're on. And the information to support what we do will be in there and make it happen. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.